How's it going everybody and welcome to my science kitchen. Uh, today we're going to be doing a lab with some pretty tasty ingredients that's going to help you uh, visualize uh, what happens when different kinds of um, 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 plates on the Earth's crust uh, move and how they interact when they either collide, separate, or slide side by side. Um, if you want to follow along at home, uh, you certainly can. The supplies you will need are uh, wax paper or tin foil or some kind of uh, paper to work on. Um, we're going to need some marshmallow fluff, uh, a knife to spread that fluff with, uh, some Hershey's chocolate bars, and some graham crackers. If you don't have those things at home, no problem. Just watch this video and take observations based on what you see happening here uh, during my demonstration. All right, so um, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our knife and get a nice big scoop here of fluff and spread that down on our paper. Now, uh, in a, uh, our goal here is to model how the different kinds of plates interact. So the things we see here are supposed to be similar to how the real tectonic plates on the Earth interact. And this fluff is going to be an important part of our model. This fluff is going to be uh, the, uh, the upper mantle or the asthenosphere of the Earth. And the reason it's, uh, we're doing that is because this fluff is kind of a solid, but it's also kind of a liquid. So uh, it can flow like that part of the mantle can, but it also is solid um, in the sense that it's not going to, it's going to just sit there for me right now as we work. All right. So, um, the, uh, the, the first kind of boundary we're going to model is a divergent boundary. So I'm going to start by taking, uh, two, or taking one Hershey bar and dividing it into two, right down the middle. So I've got these two big chunks of chocolate bar right here, and I'm going to place them on my fluff. So right now, we're modeling how the plates uh, of the Earth sit on the upper mantle or the asthenosphere of the Earth. So in this case, these two chocolate bars, or, or these two pieces of chocolate bar, are going to represent two different oceanic plates. So two different pieces of oceanic crust. And right now they're together, but we are going to see what happens when we separate them. So I'm going to start by applying a little bit of pressure here in the middle. And then I'm going to slide it apart, and we're going to see what happens to model what happens when two real oceanic plates separate. And here we go. All right. So now you're going to take some observations from your data table. So focus on how the plates moved focused on what structures you see, and focus on what you saw happening uh, while they were separating. Did you see anything moving or rising or changing? And please, uh, please be sure to put that in your observations. All right, so now we're going to uh, create a different kind of plate boundary. Uh, we're going to uh, shift gears now to a convergent plate boundary. So I no longer need this second chocolate bar piece. Oop. What a shame. So uh, I'm going to take one graham cracker and again break it in half. So now I've got two different kinds of plates on our uh, in our model here. So in the first example, we had a uh, two oceanic plates, and this time. We're going to have one oceanic plate, and the graham cracker is going to be a continental plate. And the reason we're doing that is because, remember, oceanic and continental plates are different. Uh, oceanic plates are thinner, but also, more importantly, they're much more dense. Continental crust is much lighter, like the graham cracker is much lighter or less dense than this Hershey bar. So I'm going to put them once again side by side in our model here. I'm going to push them together now to create a convergent plate boundary, and we're going to see what happens with these two examples here. All right, here we go. All 
All right. Now, um, we're going to shift gears again. We're going to create a convergent plate boundary again, but we're going to use different plates this time. So I'm going to um, remove this chocolate bar because we because we don't need any more ocean crust in this model. Uh, now we're going to see what happens when two continental plates collide. So we're going to collide two graham crackers together. And I actually forgot an ingredient uh, that we're going to need for this part. We are going to need a little bit of water here. So I'm going to take... Um, the, uh, the edge of this graham cracker, and I'm gonna just dip the, the very, very edge of it into the water, and then put that back on my uh, mantle over here. And then I'm gonna get a, my second piece of continental crust, and once again, I'm gonna dip just the edge into that water and put them together here. And now, we're going to see what happens when these two continental plates collide. And the reason we added the water is because, in reality, when two plates collide, there's, there, there's, a, there's a, a, a lot of heat and energy that makes the rocks more fluid. And uh, because heat doesn't actually melt graham cracker, we're going to use the water to model how the rock becomes a little more fluid uh, when they're being smashed together. So here we go. Let's see what happens when these two plates collide. All right, so now, now, now that that's done, we're gonna move on to our final plate boundary to model, and that's gonna be a transform plate boundary. So once again, we're gonna use our two graham crackers to be two pieces of continental crust, but unfortunately, we, uh, we can't use the, um, the, the moistened sides because we don't wanna have these rocks be, uh, be fluid. So we're gonna actually turn these graham crackers onto their sides so I can have two of the uh, rougher solid sides together. And now I'm going to have them move sideways past each other and observe what happens. And this time, while you uh, observe, one of the things you're going to have to do is actually listen. And I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to hear on your computers, but hopefully you can hear and see what I'm seeing and hearing here in the model. All right, and those are all of our plate boundaries that we're going to test today. So now, if you do have the supplies at home, you get to have a nice little snack here if you want to combine your graham crackers with your chocolate bars. And have a nice little snack. But before we uh, get a chance to eat, I also want to talk about uh, one more thing. So this model does a great job of showing us what happens when different plates collide uh, but it does not model why. So that is the limitation of this model. Uh, but I still want to talk about that with you real quick. Um, in this lab, uh, my, uh, the, the, the force that was making these plates move that made them separate or collide or slide came from my hands. Now, in re obviously in reality, there's no actual hands pushing or guiding Earth's plates. So in reality, what does make these giant slabs of rock the size of continents, what makes them able to move? What has enough force to push them or pull them? And the answer to that question is mantle convection. So just like the fluff here in our model, uh, the mantle is what's called a semi-solid. So it's, it's, it's still technically solid rock, but it's so hot that it can actually flow. Um, and move around underneath the surface. And uh, what happens is that the, the intense heat from the core deep in the earth heats up the lower part of the mantle. And as we've learned in the past, right, things that are hot become less dense, which means they rise. So rising mantle from deep in the earth comes up towards the crust, and it kind of comes up at uh, at the places we see divergent plate boundaries. So that causes some magma to burst out on the surface, 
at those boundaries and create new crust, but not all of, of the magma gets out. Once it gets to the surface, some of it moves sideways uh, underneath the surface, and as it does that, it pulls the um, plates with it. That's called slab pull. And then once it's been up at the top for a long enough time, it cools down because it's now much further away from the heat source deep in, deep in the core. And once it cools down enough, it gets denser and it begins to sink. And when it does that, uh, it often uh, will pull down uh, some plate with it at a, at, at a subduction zone. So we get new crust being formed at divergent boundaries and old crust being recycled at, um, uh, at subduction zones. And that creates uh, the recycling of earth's plates and the, 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 the force of these millions of tons of moving mantle is what pushes and pulls earth's tectonic plates. So now that we've gotten a chance to see and observe those things for ourselves, if you like, you can take your pieces and have a little snack. You can eat them just as they are, or if you've got a microwave, you can put it in there for you know 10 to 15 seconds and get it a little warm and have a great have a nice little snack. So yeah. So good. Have a great day, guys, and be sure to email your teacher with any questions. See ya.